Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about Elastic Beanstalk. Elastic Beanstalk is an AWS tool that allows you to get an application server up and running very quickly. Normally, if I wanted to get an application running on the internet quickly, I would use Heroku. However, there are some advantages of using Elastic Beanstalk. Number one, it's cheaper. Number two, it puts you inside the AWS ecosystem which will give you many more options as your app grows. This video is aimed at people who are new to AWS and want to know the easiest way to get started. It, all, it is also aimed at people who are familiar with AWS but don't know much about Elastic Beanstalk. Elastic Beanstalk supports Ruby, Python, Node.js, PHP, and many other technologies. In this video, I'm going to be deploying a Rails application. By the way, if you want to follow along with this video or set up your first Elastic Beanstalk application, Amazon gives all new accounts one year free on selected services. This means that you can play with Elastic Beanstalk for free, assuming that you have low traffic. First I'm going to show you the Elastic Beanstalk CLI. I'll navigate to Services and then Elastic Beanstalk. You can see here that uh, I've got a couple of applications. I was actually running through this screencast a couple of times uh, a couple of times earlier and Elastic Beanstalk does allow you to create an environment via the UI. However, I'm going to be doing it via the command line. So I'm going to jump over to the terminal. The first step to install the the first the first step is to install the command line application. On a Mac you can install it via Homebrew. So first I'm going to update brew then I'm going to install the the AWS elastic beanstalk so I've already got this uh, tool installed on my machine so um, Brew won't allow me to reinstall, uh, but for you, this command will work fine. Now I have that installed, um, it's time to initialize the project. So I'm already inside the application that I want to copy to Elastic Beanstalk, or sorry, that I want to deploy to Elastic Beanstalk. Uh, if you're not, then you need to CD into your project now. To initialize, I'll run eb init. eb init will now ask me a series of questions. So I'm in London, so I'll choose option 16. I want to deploy the GitHub webhooks application. Uh, Elastic Beanstalk has detected that I'm using Ruby. So I just need to confirm this. I'm using Ruby 2.5 Puma. I don't want to use code commit. I do want to use SSH. And for SSH, I'm going to use my existing AWS EB key pair. Now that I've done that, I, I'm going to run git status to see if anything's changed. You can see that the my git ignore file has uh, changed. If I diff that, you'll see that there are three new entries. Um, basically, it's uh, basically Elastic Beanstalk has added an Elastic Beanstalk directory. So if I take a look at that, you can see there's a single config file 
and if I cat that you can see this file has uh, or this file is the place that saves all of the configuration that I just set now that I've configured the project I can deploy the application to Elastic Beanstalk to deploy I run EB create and then the name of my application environment so I'm going to call this staging 3 so I'm going to run EB create staging 3 I'm also going to specify well I'm also going to override the default database configuration by default Elastic Beanstalk um, will install MySQL for you but my uh, project is using Postgres so I need to override that to do that I specify the DB engine flag and pass in the Postgres database engine lastly I'm going to tell AWS to use uh, my demo credentials and I do that by passing the profile flag with the with my demo profile um, I'm doing that for because I don't want to use my main account uh, but if you only have one AWS account then you don't need to specify your credentials uh, in this case EB will look up your default AWS credentials now uh, EB is asking me for uh, for a name for my database or sorry a, a username I'm going to leave the default I'm going to set a password confirm the password and now uh, EB has started the uh, creation process so it's trying to create an environment for me this will take some time because it needs to create uh, load balances, load balances, security groups, uh, an EC2 server, an S3 bucket, um, and other stuff. Other stuff that I've forgotten. So, um, so bear with it, but bear with me, and I'll be back after the creation has finished. Now you can see that my create command was unsuccessful. That's because I have a gem which has a native dependency. You can see the stack trace here. The, the stack trace basically says that, um, well, you can see that it leads to the FFI gem. Uh, it, it took me uh, a little bit of investigation, but I discovered that the FFI gem needs native system dependencies. To fix that, I need to tell Elastic Beanstalk to uh, install the FFI system dependencies. I do that by creating an EB extensions directory um, and then creating a file inside that. So I'm going to open my editor. I'm going to create a new folder dot eb extension and inside there I'm going to create a new file I'm going to call it run.config this file can actually have any name as long as it ends in dot config and this is a YAML file I'm going to tell uh, Elastic Beanstalk that I want to install some packages and I want to install the packages via yum and I want to install lib ffi devel and I'll save that file and I'm going to I'm going to commit both of these files um, so I'm committing the git ignore file and the 
uh, eb extensions directory with the config file inside it. So add git ignore and eb extensions. Now I can rerun the uh, create command only eb will only let me run the create command once because I've already run that command once uh, the environment is already there so what I need to do instead is run deploy so if I hit up a few times this is my create command I'm going to change it to deploy and I'm going to remove the database engine part so now I get another error the stack trace or the the output from the deploy command isn't quite as clear this time so I'm going to investigate by viewing the logs I can do that with eb logs environment name and again specifying the profile so we can see the at the top the nginx error log um, and I believe this is the yes this is the the Ruby application log and you can see here that um, well actually this error is basically is basically saying that device is missing the uh, secret key so I either need to modify the device initializer or I need to add the secret key to my uh, as an environment variable to uh, Elastic Beanstalk so let's do that now let's add the environment variable I can do that with eb set env and I'm going to set the envir environment variable secret key base and I'm going to set that and, and to do that I'm going to run oops I'm going to run the rails secret command and again specify the environment staging 3 and my profile so this is going to run the uh, if I've done it correctly eb set m for secret key base ah I think I need to do dash e and that looks right so this command is basically saying run run rail secret assign that value to an environment variable called secret key base on my uh, or inside my staging 3 environment okay now that's done I'm going to redeploy so I'm okay, yeah hit up a couple of times and redeploy the app and let's see what happens this time this time I get another error and here I can see uh, mention of Postgres um, this makes me realize that or this makes me remember that I haven't configured my database YAML file to work with Elastic Beanstalk so here's my database YAML file and if we look at the um, uh, Elastic Beanstalk documentation, it tells me how, how I should configure a Rails application to connect to the database in uh, Elastic, Lo Elastic Beanstalk. So I'm going to copy that here. And I just need to change, um, so I'm not using MySQL, I'm using Postgres
and I'm not using UTF-8, I'm using Unicode. Uh, sorry, PostgreSQL, I think. I believe that should be PostgreSQL. So I'm going to add my database YAML file. Okay, I'm going to commit that. So add database YAML settings for EB. I'm going to push that. Now I can try to deploy again and see what happens. Let's see whether this time it's a success. Once that's finished, I can run EB status. Again, selecting the profile. And this tells me the status of the application is uh, ready and it's uh, green, which is obviously good. That means it's healthy. And I can also go over to the browser and I can go, I can refresh the Elastic Beanstalk UI. And you can see that staging three is now green. So Elastic Beanstalk provides me with a URL for my application. And fingers crossed, there we go. My application is now running on Elastic Beanstalk. So thanks very much for, for watching and I hope you found that useful.